little dinks. Got it? Yep, got him. Big one? Yeah, I'm coming. That might be a good one. Yeah, that might be a good one. It's got like one hook in him. You need to catch any dinks. I know. There's another one. Whipping my ass, man. <laughs> Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's Fishing with Calvin. And welcome back to another installment of the 24 daily uploads of December where I post a new video for you guys each day of December until Christmas. And also, welcome back to another episode of the new series, Tournament Vlogs, where I vlog all my tournaments for you guys. You guys know the deal. So for this tournament, tournament season's coming to a close. This might actually be my last tournament of the season until next year, but it shouldn't be too much longer until the next one. And I think we ended it on a decent note, so you guys will have to see for yourselves and see what you guys think. So with that being said, let's hop into it. So before I forget, like last vlog, uh, my partner, his name is George, super cool guy. And he's actually pre-fishing this lake like for like a week before the tournament. And so I thought that gave us a nice little advantage. And so the lake we're fishing is called Melbourne. And it's one of the smaller lakes on the roster this season, uh, which could mean some good fishing. This lake has got a mix of smallmouth and largemouth. But unfortunately, the day before, the night before, it just poured. And so we figured that would kind of shut down the smallmouth fight a little bit. Uh, the smallmouth don't like the rain. And on tournament day, it's overcast. And so that's just even worse for the smallmouth fight. And on top of that, the water is probably a couple foot low. And so it makes the fishing just a little bit tougher than it normally would be. So anyway, we start out in the morning right by the launch because that's where George has been catching a couple fish. I start out by throwing a top water, a buzz bait, because that's what George was saying. They were keying in on the previous days. So I start out by throwing a buzz bait, looking for some large mouth. And George, he starts out by throwing a crank bait, I believe. And we just start out by working our way towards the bank. And I'd say maybe I took like 20 casts, maybe, and I get my first blow up of the day. I wasn't looking. That was a freaking quality smallmouth. I was not expecting a smallmouth on the buzz bait. That was freaking crazy. That's one of those moments I wish I could have had back. I was not paying attention. I just like heard my buzz bait stop moving, felt a little bit of tension, and might have set the hook a little too early, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I guess I just didn't pin him enough. Life goes on though, man, we keep beating the bang. Pretty much throwing every rig I got now, so. Throwing the Ned rig, the buzz bait, the crank bait, the jig, everything. Here we make it to this first little cut, and George is able to capitalize on his first fish of the day. Nice. Little dink. Just a tiny bit short though. It's turned out to be not too bad a morning so far. Could have had one keeper and then we're finding some fish. We caught it on a cotton cordell, which is like a small lipless crankbait, uh, which is really not too bad a bait to be throwing. He said the fish were going to be finicky, and so he said we might downsize a little bit. And that's kind of like a con cordell. It's kind of like a downsized red eye shad almost. Then we fish a little bit more, and right on cue, I throw a bird's nest. And as I'm picking it out, George hooks another fish. Big one? Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, yeah. 
Nice fish. Thank you, sir. Yep. Get him here. And this time it was a keeper. I believe it's a 15 and three quarter inch fish. Another one on the Con Cordell. So we're thinking we might have a pattern down now. We're chasing bait right up shallow is where he said he caught it. And so we might have something going on for us. So then just a couple minutes later, I catch my first fish of the morning on a net rig. There we go. Got him? Yep. Oh shit. You might make it well. Maybe. You make it? Nope. Eleven. Eleven? Yep. Unfortunately though, it just barely didn't make the cut. And so after that, we keep following the bank, covering water. And then you guys could really tell how low the water was because at those bushes you guys could see, like a couple foot above the water, usually that's where the water level's at. Would have been nice to be fishing that rock ledge if the water was just a tiny bit higher. But apparently it still has some fish though because I got my second fish of the day right there. That might be a good one. Yeah, that might be a good one. Net? Yeah, probably. There you go. Thanks. Nice one. Yep. Nice. Little Ned rig. Yep. That'll measure. Yep. That fish went 14 and three quarters. And so now we both got a uh, keeper fish to add to the limit. And so far, all the fish that we've caught, except for that one blew up on my buzz bait, have been largemouth. So that's kind of like what we expected. And then, I'm not sure how long after the first one this happened, but then I eventually catch another random fish just throwing a crankbait at the bank. One hook in him. There you go. Came out of the net. Thanks. Good deal. Nice one there. Yeah. Fifteen and three quarter. Good one. Nice. Caught that guy on a six cent square wheel, kind of an unusual color, uh, black and blue, I believe. I started throwing six cent square bills ever since that Glen Elder tournament. They're quality crankbaits. So then we reach this little stretch uh, where all we catch is dinks and just little sunfish. So I'll show you guys that. You need to catch any dinks. I know. <laughs> nice one. Got it? Yep, got him. Oof. Yeah, where you dumped that was a big one. You say what? It fell in the water. <laughs> I 
I don't think he'll be 12. Yeah, he's 11. Then we just got back to being the bank. Got pretty quiet, but eventually we pull up to this little cut with a juicy looking lay down. And on our way up to it, I'm playing with fire. I'm throwing my crankbait right up next to the lay down on the edges of it. Nothing hit though, so I, as we get closer, I decide to pick up my net rig and kind of pick it apart a little bit more. And sure enough, one good flip with the net rig was all it took. Another one. Oh! Came when off. They jump like that, keep your pole down so they stay in the water. Alright. That way they won't jump off. I gotcha. That was a nice one. Yeah, damn. That sucks. I knew there had to be one in there. I know. Gunshine now, don't it? Yep. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Didn't keep my rod down. And it's running with it too, which meant there's probably more fish in there in that lay down. But we probably flipped in there probably 50 more times and just couldn't really catch any more bass, except I did catch one other fish. Ah, uh, what, what the hell? A walleye. <laughs> you know, you don't stick your fingers in their mouth, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, I got to. <laughs> Just the wrong species. After that, we probably flip in there a couple more times and we decide to keep moving, keep moving down this little cut. And as I'm throwing my crankbait, I'm like, wondering how deep we're fishing and so i stick my rod in the water I'm like damn we're only fishing like one foot of water and so we're fishing pretty dang shallow even next even next to that lay down i think it was pretty shallow it was like one to two feet and so right on cue eventually we run out of water and so we circle back around to see if there's any more fish in that lay down and unfortunately if there was there wasn't any that wanted to bite so then after that we decided to cross to the other side of the cut and unfortunately i break off my crankbait that's doing pretty well for me and I think I did miss a fish catch in between my second fish and that lay down, but unfortunately I didn't get it on video for you guys. Thought I did, but maybe not, because I couldn't find it in the footage, so anyway. And so we cross the other side of the cut and we fish a little bit, and unfortunately I break off the square bill that's, that's caught two of my fish already. And so I decided to tie on my last crankbait, which is a Lucky Craft, kind of an unusual color. It's like the exact opposite of what I was throwing with that six cent square bill. It's kind of a blue yield pattern, but it's like got a bunch of white flakes in it. Lucky Craft, another good brand. I'm throwing it on the crank on my cranking rod. I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I made a full video about all my setups and everything. I'll leave a link down in the description if you guys wanna check that video out. But uh, back to the crankbait. And I guess it worked too because uh, as I'll tell you guys here in a minute. Uh, bruh. Well, this was my cranking rod. There it is. I'm literally reeling. What the? Broke my rod on camera. And that is not a good sound either. Damn. That is so unfortunate. And it's getting the bird's nest now. Frick. Oh, shit. Never mind, I fixed it. For some reason, it was just having a little fit. What the heck? Alright. Oh, $50 saved. But anyway, back to the video. And as I tie on that crankbait that I was just showing you guys, George ends up finding my six cent square bill flowing up on the top of the water and so I was like damn I just could have tied that six cents square wheel back on but since I already had this one tied on I decided to throw it a couple times 
And good thing I did, because we just got into like a flurry of fish and apparently they wanted this crankbait over here. Yeah, I got one. Hey George. Hey George. Hey George. Hey George. Hey George. I'm not sure how big he is. A small mount. <sighs> Good job. Nice. Bring him down here. All right. He came off. Yeah. I thought he jumped off there for a second. Fourteen ahead. Yep. Good deal. That's awesome. Whipping my ass, man. <sighs> Another one. Man, you used to catching all kinds of stuff with that. I know. Got one. for me today. It's number five. Came off. Not at the boat? Yeah. And all the while we're catching these fish, I'm starting to get a little worried because it's a little bit down the bank. Probably the boat with two best anglers in the club. Somehow they got paired together for this tournament. <laughs> they just been sitting off this point for like a few hours. And I know they're catching fish because they wouldn't be staying there for that long if they weren't. And I'm like, they probably got this one in the bag. Not like I think we've got enough to win, but we could get onto a pattern and start catching them. Anything's possible, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So I'm not going to bore you guys with the rest. I think I may have caught one more fish off camera, like a 14 and quarter inch fish. So yeah, not the best tournament, but at least I got a limit, limit of keepers, which that's a win for any tournament. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the 24 Daily Uploads of December. And if you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Shit. So what? Just a drum slime yourself. <sighs>